<clears throat> All right. Hey folks, this is Karen Trepti of Gaijin Works Coaching, your productivity coach. So excited today. I know you're going to be too to meet Sandy Zeisler or Sandra. You which do you prefer being called? Uh, Sandy's great. Sandy's all right. Okay, great. So she is a LinkedIn expert, guys, and we haven't had a LinkedIn expert yet. So I am just thrilled to have met her, both for her and for her expertise. So hi, Sandy. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. I'm excited to be on here at the call. Good. Fantastic. So before we get started with your expertise, I always like to know um, my guests just a little bit better. This is a very informal format, as people know who watch this channel. So can you just tell us a little bit about you first, please? Like, where did you grow up and what are you really interested in? Sure. I, um, I'm in the Midwest. I'm currently living in the Minneapolis metro area, just on the west side of, of Minneapolis downtown. So I'm considered part of the metro, um, but kind of grew up in, you know, the Minnesota. So I'm a, a native Minnesotan, but I was actually born in North Dakota or South Dakota and then kind of grew up in North Dakota. Um, you know, I enjoy summer here as much as we can <laughs> um, in spring. I love to get outside and hike in the beautiful trails we have. Um, we have a lot of lakes and rivers we can walk around. I love reading um, and love being an entrepreneur. Awesome. Awesome. And what led you on that path to becoming an entrepreneur? I found myself in the job um, unemployment market again for the fourth time back in 2008. And I had attended a seminar on LinkedIn for job seekers and I was inspired to become my own entrepreneur and I started looking around and investigating what it took and so six years later now here I am and I'm just doing LinkedIn training and I love it. That's so cool. That's so yeah. cool. So let's let's jump right in then and tell us um, most of our viewers here are female. Most of them are entrepreneurs. So we do have probably a few different levels, people who are just starting their business or in the middle or maybe even making six figures and so on. So can you address like each of those levels for me, please, and tell them what they might want to learn about LinkedIn? Sure. I think that LinkedIn has so much to offer at every level of where you're at. Um, and it's really the same thing for everybody, including those that are job seekers, um, until you get to the lead generation. And job seekers, lead generation for them is getting hired. So it's just slightly different. Everybody should have a great profile. Reflect who you are. We're great entrepreneurs. We're great business owners. We might be working at a, you know, it depends on what, if you're working at a corporation, that's great. But reflect who you are as a personal profile because people want to know and get to know you better. And that's a really great starting point for wherever level you're at. And then there's opportunity for those that are on the profile and to do, you know, reaching out and connecting with new people and making connections like you and I did. And that was really fun. Yeah. Um, it was super fun. So, okay. So if someone were to get started, let's say they're on LinkedIn already, but um, they don't really like know what to do. <laughs> let, let, let's say that they're an entrepreneur who's been in business maybe a year, maybe two, something like that. And of course, there's a million different hats that we wear as entrepreneurs just to get our business up and going. Yep. So what would you advise them to do? Um, you know, you've probably created an account like a lot of people have. LinkedIn's been around for 13 years. So uh, most people just have an account and forgot about it or just very seldom LinkedIn. If you can set a goal to get onto LinkedIn, at least once a week is awesome. Once a month is great too to get started. Log in, maybe make and make sure that things are current because you nothing worse than having stuff that's old. Because if somebody comes to your door front, and there's stuff that's two, three years old, they're going to wonder if you're still open. And it kind of, same rule goes with your website and your Facebook page. We just can't leave that stuff empty. We have to keep nurturing everything. So, you know, make sure that you've got a current photo, make sure that you've got a little bit of details summary about yourself, and then start making connections. 
And that's the biggest, kind of a big hurdle for a lot of people is who do you connect with? Like, how do you do that too? Like, how would you do that? I mean, I think a, a lot of us yeah. know how to do it on Facebook, but how do you do that on Facebook? Yeah, and we're so open to just friend people on Facebook. That's crazy. Now I just expose my personal life on Facebook to people. <laughs> and on LinkedIn, it's professional. So think about just the same thing, but just in a professional manner. And look to see if the person is somewhat credible. You can identify um, whether you've you know, met them on a Facebook group is great starting points of who to connect with. And then send them a customized connection request. Visit their profile first and then click on that connection request button. And there's a pop-up that asks you now, it's a little bit new with a new platform, you do not have to identify if you're a friend or a colleague or a, you know, past or you don't know them. It just says add a note. Like yeah, they took that away. Oh. Yep. Yay, that's gone. <laughs> that was really confusing. And so, no, I don't know you until I get to know you. Right. And so just send a note and just simply say, you know, I came across your profile. would look, like to learn more about you and find something that's interesting about them. They, we love talking about ourselves. So ask a question. Maybe they went to a certain college or something. And that's a great way to start a conversation. That's a great idea. It's a great idea. Actually, I have a, I have a group, so I'm going to invite everybody right now. It's called Productivity mm -hmm. Pros. And um, so feel free to jump on there and ask questions. Please offer your expertise, your ideas. I um, would love to have you on that group. Mm -hmm. So Sure. Um, Okay, so you connect with people. Now, when you do it, let's say for yourself, well, I guess it's a little bit different because you're offering LinkedIn training. Mm -hmm. um, so do you, do you advise your clients, for example, to set goals of like mm -hmm. how many people they're going to connect with? Or, I mean, what kind of strategy do you kind of wrap around this? A really good starting strategy is to build up to 500 connections. That's the minimum strategy. Start making, and a great way in those that are in the group, connect with other people in the group because that's a great starting point. You have something in common. Okay. And that's a great starting point because there's 460 million people out on LinkedIn. So who do you start with? Start with a group, something you have in common. So then, you know, start making those connections and then you know, you want to then message people because you can't just set it and forget it. You can't just build these connections and then ignore people. So take a note um, on a piece of paper or in an Excel spreadsheet. And when they s accept your connection, then send them a little get to know you message. And then maybe a month or two later, send them another message, another, you know, maybe have a phone call, ask to have a virtual coffee. And then send them something of value of yours. Don't sell them, but send them something of value. Maybe it's a free tip sheet or maybe you know, that you have on your website or a free webinar that you're going to offer. Invite them to something, but get to know them without selling on them. But that's a great way because you know, I've got almost 3,000 connections and you want to stay in, in contact with them as well. Right. So, for example, um, most of us as entrepreneurs have opt-in. So you're mm -hmm. saying that that's one thing we could send them that wouldn't Correct. be offensive or? Absolutely. Okay. Okay. And then they could choose to see if that's of value to them and open it or not. Yep. Okay. I do encourage the folks out there. Um, it doesn't have to be my group, Productivity Pros, but mm -hmm. to, join, to join groups. I mean, yeah. it's pretty small to start with. Mm -hmm. um, but there's some nice large groups out there. So can you talk mm -hmm. about that a little bit? Um, first I'll address, yeah. they moved the menu, of course, LinkedIn moved it. And so now it's over on the far right hand side underneath the three, there's nine dots. So you want to click on that and then that's how you access your groups. Thank you for and, telling us that. Cause I looked the other day, <laughs> I haven't been on here in a while. Like where the heck? Where? <laughs> I have that a lot from my client. They're like, where in the world did this go? And that's where it's at. Um, doesn't quite make sense because it's for work, but we, you know, we think that we're working a group. So yes, we can, there's millions of groups and yes, you can be a member of a hundred groups. And I say that there's value in that. Find some that are good, 
but then pick three that is where your ideal client hangs out. Who is your ideal client? It goes back to marketing 101. Find out where they're at and then share your blog in there. But then also, you know, don't always push information out to them, but then comment on other people's stuff right. and engage with others. That's what it's about. So take some time and, and help somebody else out because then it'll, it'll return to you that much faster and much better. But so just take a note. I have a little post-it note on my, on my computer screen, and it says, here's my three for the week. Can I just focus on a few different ones so I'm not on all of them? And then I find out what works because some of them are great and some of them aren't. Your, th your three what? Your three groups? My three, yeah, my three groups. So I, because I can't focus on 100 groups. Right. I'm not going to go visit 100 groups. Mm -hmm. And some may not be very active. Right. So I pick out my kind of a top three that I – want to be into you know is it women's groups women's entrepreneur groups is it sales and marketing groups is it maybe mom's groups you know where do you where's your interest because that's the same people that are in those groups right. and so I just focus on three of them go in there on a weekly basis and see what's happening and do you rotate your different groups then I do I have about you know 10 10 to 20 that are more active that I like that I've picked and then I rotate them just because I don't have time. And so I, I, you know, for me, I do it once a week or at least weekly. And some of my clients will just pick three for the whole month and focus on them. Whatever works for you that you have time. But it takes just a few moments to just sign into LinkedIn and look at the group and look to see what other people, you don't have to post if you don't have content and just look to see what other people are doing. And then comment on somebody else's post or question or ask a question. That's, that's related. Yep. It's a great way to start a conversation. Yeah. Just ask a question. And then mm -hmm. I always get a kick out of this. So how many groups do you belong to? I am. I am at the hundred. <laughs> okay. The 100. <laughs> okay. That's my business. And so that's where I'm at, right. but that's really easy to get to that. Um, I, and if you don't know which groups, just type in the keywords. So if you're a mom or you're an entrepreneur or your city, there's groups with those titles in the title. And those are kind of good ways to start. So if you're in 100 groups, that's fun. Mm -hmm. I love lots of groups. Yep. Um, so you said you mentioned you focus on three, like maybe rotate through the 20. What do you do with your other 80? <sighs> that's a good question. There's a lot of groups I'm a member of that just are not active. Okay. Nobody has posted anything for a month. And that happens. Um, some of the groups I'm a member of, it's maybe a LinkedIn strategic planning group. And I don't need to spend time in there. Maybe if I have a question once in a while, I'll go to that. Mm -hmm. um, or there's a, I am a member of a community involvement for job seekers. And for me, I don't need to be part of that. I don't need to be active in those groups. I'm just a member of the group. Okay. So you just visit them rarely then maybe. Yep. Once yep. Every couple months, something like that. Correct. And are you on a lot of other social media as well, Sandy? <laughs> um, no, I have. <laughs> I am on Facebook. I'm on Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram. I am on the sites, but I'm not very active. Okay. Um, time. <laughs> yes. Yep. It's a time thing. Biggest thing with LinkedIn is that you can, if I do a status update on LinkedIn, you can choose the audience of public plus Twitter and it'll automatically send it to Twitter. Interesting. So I don't have to do anything with Twitter except just when I post onto LinkedIn. Okay. It does it for me. So that's how you handle that. Mm -hmm. And then your Pinterest, you just let that be for a while or? Yeah, Pinterest. I use it more for personal, you know, recipes and stuff. Right. I'm starting to dabble in more into Instagram, a little bit more with pictures and stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious. I'm just wrapping my head around. <laughs> so, I mean, it sounds like in a lot of ways that, I mean, LinkedIn social media. Mm -hmm. So it's very similar to other platforms. I think people tend to get a little bit scared of it or, mm -hmm. you know, shy away from it. Um, what would you say sets LinkedIn apart from those other social media platforms? I think the biggest 
part of it is that it's for, it's you, the person, professional. There's not going to be cat videos. Right. No dog pictures. No dog pictures. No kids. Right. Once in a while, you'll get that, but it's the 1% of time. Okay. It, it happens, but it's very rare. You know, I had a client the other day said one of their connections shared about a fundraiser they were part of for a kid. And he says, well, that's very inappropriate for LinkedIn. And it can be, but he's also showing that he's reaching out to his community and doing community involvement. And as a business professional, volunteering is part of your passion. Right, right. If he was posting daily on that, I would consider it being misused. But once every couple months is not. So, and then in terms of the relationships, are they mostly professional relationships, would you say, in terms of, you know, how that builds on LinkedIn or? Yeah, a lot of it is building the relationships. It's getting to know people on a one-to-one -one basis professionally. You know, you still can have the water cooler conversation. Right but without getting into politics and, you know, religion, but there's still a lot to, con you know, have a conversation about. And especially as an entrepreneur, find another entrepreneur and find out what their passions are and get to know them. Just, and it's so much different than, you know, Facebook. You're not going to want to follow their personal page, you know, their personal profile on Facebook because it's just maybe too much. You don't want to, or I don't want to share my, you know, my cat videos <laughs> right. or I don't really want to see somebody else's or about their kids. So, yeah. So, so I don't want to have all those connections. What questions should I be asking you about LinkedIn, Sandy, that I haven't covered so far before we wrap this up? I think that the, um, I challenge people to get on there on a couple times a week, log in and start investigating what other people are doing explore and get to know the new platform it is a little bit scarier but there it, it is there they're making the messaging um if you don't like something there may be another way of handling it and that's kind of what i get from clients i always find a, a way around and one of those is the messaging you can turn off the pop-up there's a setting for all of that i see i see yeah Super. I so appreciate you coming on with me today. Yeah. Please tell people how they can find you. So if they want to learn more about LinkedIn and how to use that strategy for their own businesses, right? That's what you teach. Yep. Okay. So I am on LinkedIn and I can be found at linkedin.com forward slash I N forward slash S. And then my last name, Zeisler, Z is in zebra. E I S Z L E R. It's a quick way to get to me. Okay. Or my website, amoxyclicks.com. M O X Z. <laughs> have to have the Z's in there. Yeah. M O X Z clicks, C L I C K S dot com. And I do webinars and local individual client training all over the world. Super. And I would love to connect with people. Wonderful. We're really thrilled to have you on here today. So I just thank you. And that's it for this time, folks. This is Karen Trefty, Guiding Works Coaching, Productivity Coach. And thanks to Sandy for all her wonderful tips. So thanks so much, Karen. You're welcome. Awesome.